In this video, I'll be running through structures of the brain. Now, what we're looking at here is a lateral view of the brain at this point. And here we can see uh, we've got the cerebrum up here and the cerebellum. We've got a bunch of bumps and grooves in the cerebrum. And what that does is it increases the surface area in here so that we can pack more cells and more function into the brain. The bumps and the grooves have different names. If we're talking about the bumps here, a bump in the cerebrum is called a gyrus. Okay? These grooves in here that separate the gyri, gyri would be plural for gyrus, okay? these grooves that separate the gyri, those are called sulcuses or sulci. Okay? So a gyrus is a bump and a sulcus is a groove. Okay? If a groove is really large, then it's called a fissure. Okay, this would be the medial longitudinal fissure. The cerebrum is divided up into lobes. The frontal lobe would be up here, anterior to this line right here, which is the central sulcus. Okay. The parietal lobe would be back here, posterior to the central sulcus. Okay. And then the occipital lobe would be back here, and there is a sulcus that separates the parietal lobe from the occipital lobe. It's called the parieto occipital sulcus. Now we can't really see it unless we turn it like this. And here we can see that sulcus that separates parietal lobe from occipital lobe. Okay. This lobe right here is the temporal lobe. And it's separated from the frontal and parietal lobes by this structure right here, which is called the lateral fissure. Sometimes this is called the lateral fissure. Sometimes this is called the lateral sulcus. Sometimes this is called the lateral sulcus of Sylvius. Sometimes it's called the Sylvian fissure. If we were able to separate, put some probes in here and separate the cerebrum, here at the lateral sulcus, we would be able to see the insula in there, and that is considered another lobe of the cerebrum. However, this model does not depict that. This down here is the cerebellum. Okay, cerebellum is going to be important for coordinating motor function or the function of uh, skeletal muscles, skeletal muscle coordination. Okay. Now, on this surface here, we can see many important structures. This would be the olfactory bulb right here. The olfactory nerves, cranial nerve 1, those nerves would attach here at the olfactory bulb. This is the olfactory tract back here. Okay. This structure here and here, they would be the optic nerves. And the optic nerves are going to cross at the optic chiasm and then head back toward the occipital lobe at the back of the brain. Now this structure right here is the pituitary gland and it's held onto the brain by a stem-like structure, which we could see under here, called the infundibulum. Okay. If I tilt the brain like this, you can see these little bulbous structures in here. Those would be the mammillary bodies. Okay. Now, we can also see a little bit of the cerebral peduncles here. This structure right here would be the pons, and this down here would be the medulla oblongata. That would taper off and form the spinal cord or connect to the spinal cord. Now let's run through the cranial nerves on this model. Okay? Remember, cranial nerve number one, the olfactory nerve, that's going to attach here to the olfactory bulb. Okay? And then that information is brought through the olfactory tract, and that information will terminate here in the temporal lobe, okay. bypassing the thalamus, by the way. Cranial nerve number two, which is the optic nerve, is right here. Cranial nerve number three, which is oculomotor, that's going to be in here. Okay. Cranial nerve number four, which is the trochlear nerve, that's going to be right here. Okay. Cranial nerve number five, that's going to be the trigeminal nerve, and the trigeminal nerve has three branches, hence the name tri. Okay. They would be the ophthalmic branch, the maxillary branch, and the mandibular branch. Okay. Then we would have to 
tilt to the side so that we can see the next few nerves. This nerve right here, it's labeled 6 on this model, this is going to be the abducens nerve. Cranial nerve 7 is right here, and that would be the facial nerve. Cranial nerve 8 is going to be in here, and that's going to be the vestibulocochlear nerve. Okay. Cranial nerve 9 is right here, that's glossopharyngeal. Cranial nerve 10 is right here, that's the vagus nerve. Cranial nerve 11 is right here, that cranial nerve 11 is the spinal accessory nerve. Sometimes it's just called accessory nerve. Okay. And then cranial nerve 12 is up here, and that's the hypoglossal nerve. Okay. If I were to label those on this side, where there are no numbers to help us, cranial nerve number 1 would attach here. That's the olfactory nerve, and the olfactory nerve attaches to the olfactory bulb here. Cranial nerve number 2 is the optic nerve. Cranial nerve 3 in here, that's going to be the oculomotor nerve. Cranial nerve 4 right here is the trochlear nerve. Cranial nerve 5 right here, that's the trigeminal nerve. Cranial nerve 6 is right here, and cranial nerve 6 is going to be the abducens nerve. Cranial nerve 7 is right here, and that's the facial nerve. Cranial nerve 8 is right here, and that's the vestibulocochlear nerve. Okay. Cranial nerve 9 is right here. And cranial nerve 9 is the glossopharyngeal nerve. Cranial nerve 10 right here, that's the vagus nerve. Cranial nerve 11 right here, that's the spinal accessory nerve, or just accessory nerve, depending on what book you read. And then cranial nerve 12 is right here, and cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal nerve. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.